Brand new details as the federal indictment of Donald Trump gets unsealed. The former president getting hit with 37 charges in the classified documents case. Trump's aide also getting indicted. The feds say there are two instances of Trump showing classified material to people, including a military plan of attack against an unnamed country. Trump's accused of directing an aide to move documents out of a storage room before an FBI subpoena. The DOJ also claiming that Trump suggested to his lawyer that they should hide or destroy the documents. The former president will appear in federal court Tuesday in Miami and is proclaiming his innocence. And we had tremendous support, but that was a hoax and a scam. And now they're doing it again. It's just a continuation, seven years. I'm an innocent man. I did nothing wrong. And we will fight this out just like we've been fighting for seven years. It would be wonderful if we could f devote our full time to making America great again. Special counsel Jack Smith breaking his silence, but not taking questions on why he decided to indict Trump. Our nation's commitment to the rule of law sets an example for the world. We have one set of laws in this country, and they apply to everyone. It's very important for me to note that the defendants in this case must be presumed innocent until proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt in a court of law. Joe Biden saying that he doesn't know what the Joe Biden DOJ was doing. President Biden, have you spoken to Attorney General Merrick Garland yet? I have not spoken to him at all. I'm not going to speak to him. No comment on what happened. And the liberal media has been popping the champagne since the news broke. I don't know. It's, it's, it's sad and it's shocking, but it's also kind of, it's, it makes me feel a bit relieved. Line by line by line of this indictment lays out calculation, deliberate misconduct. You can see the voluminous nature of this, that they have the goods and the receipts. It is bad news. I have never seen anything hit Donald Trump this hard. That sound that you hear is silence, mm -hmm. largely, from Republicans in these moments. Uh, maybe they're reading this 50-page document. The taped conversation, is that a, a smoking gun? Do they consider, as part of a potential plea offer, something that would prescribe him, proscribe him from, from, from running for office again? Judge Jeanine Pirro, you've been reading the indictment. How would you characterize it? <laughs> you know, I am so livid right now. I am furious. I have spent over three decades in a system that I believe in. I'm a believer. But today, I am no longer a believer. What you've got is a weaponized Department of Justice, Department of FBI, and CIA. We saw it from the time he came down that, that escalator. They started with the Russia collusion hoax, and we know that Hillary Clinton made it up. She even told a president, the Durham report, she told Biden and she told Obama she was gonna do it to get rid of her email scandal. So what did they do? The FBI lied. They went to a FISA court judge. They lied three more times. They needed to get this guy, and then they see they violated the Fourth Amendment rights of one American and spied on a presidential candidate, and we now know it was all a hoax started by Hillary Clinton. But that wasn't enough. Then what we had is the FBI telling social media, you can expect that there's going to be Russian disinformation in the form of a Hunter Biden laptop. And that's when they interfered with the presidential election for the second time. And 51 CIA intelligence agents. So we've got the DOJ, the FBI, the CIA say, oh, this is Russian disinformation, when we know damn well it wasn't Russian disinformation. And now what you've got is a loser prosecutor, Jack Smith, who's been slapped down by the United States Supreme Court in his in one of his prosecutions that if I were a lawyer, I would give up my law license. I'd be so embarrassed hiding under a rock. He's the one who prosecuted John Edwards. He's got a political agenda. And this is all over a Presidential Records Act, which is a civil, civil suit, a civil issue. And so what they do is they put out this narrative indictment. Oh, this is a story of wrongdoing, national defense. And let's put in espionage. We can kind 
kind of tie it into the Russian collusion. So people will say, oh, it could have been the Russians. This is nonsense. And I want to know, how many documents were altered? How many documents were destroyed? Zero. Zero. But who destroyed 33,000 documents that she lied about over and over again? Hillary Clinton. She destroyed them. That was tampering with evidence. That was obstruction of justice. And did the DOJ, the FBI care? They didn't give a damn. But now they care. What are they so afraid of? Let him run for office. And if he loses, then that's the end of it. I hate a country that is akin to a third world country. This is a banana republic. When you indict one guy running for president and the guy who's doing it is some old geezer who says, you know what? I don't know anything about it. The day, by the way, the day that we finally get under threat of contempt of the head of the FBI, we finally get a 1023 from a credible FBI source, credible, $200,000 worth of credibility the FBI paid him, saying Joe took $5 million, Hunter took $5 million from Ukraine. And I'm not done yet. I'll tell you something else. This whole thing with Ukraine, why the heck is everybody going to Ukraine? Why do we put billions and billions and billions of dollars into Ukraine? What the heck is going on over there? Randy Weingarten going to check out education. And Joe Biden goes over there in January of 2018, and he says, if you don't get the prosecutor off that company where my son makes $80,000 a month, and if you don't get rid of him, I'm not going to give you the billion dollars that the United States promised you. Well, Joe, that's called pay to play. It's an organized criminal enterprise that we have as a president and his family. They should be ashamed and every American should be ashamed of what happened today. <laughs> well said. Jessica, I assume you agree with most of that. <laughs> I was struck by a lot of what the judge just said, mostly the fact that she didn't address the documents that were panning across the screen, that there were documents found in the bathroom, in the shower, in the ballroom, in his bedroom, in his office. That there were documents pertaining to our nuclear programs, pertaining to our weaknesses and our allies' weaknesses, um, what makes us vulnerable, clearly a national security risk. What has been proven time and time again when it comes to this particular case is that Donald Trump and all of his supporters have been lying to us about what happened. So first he went with everyone, everything was declassified because he's magic and he could look at things and they become declassified. Now he's on tape admitting the fact that he's showing people, Mark Meadows' team when he's trying to do the book, a document that was still classified and that he knows that he doesn't have the power to declassify it anymore because he's no longer president. He said they were properly secured. I don't think a toilet is a skiff. Maybe I'm wrong. Better than a Corvette. Yeah. Or Here you go. Misdirection. Misdirection. That's Just not take. Yes, it That's is. The whole because point. no, it's not. Because in the B block, we'll talk about Ukraine, and then I can hear about Viktor Shokin all over again. He also said that he complied with everything. We know he flouted subpoenas, and now we know that he asked his lawyers to get rid of things. It seems, and yes, I, I'm not a lawyer, but I'm decently smart. I know some viewers don't necessarily think that, but I'm telling you, and a few of my teachers would agree. <laughs> that this seems like a pretty clear case of obstruction. And Jonathan Turley's been on our air all day talking about this and saying that these charges are the darlings of what they're looking for because they are easy to prove, especially when you have pictures of them. So if Hillary actually does get rid of things. Here we go. This has nothing to do with it Hillary has, Clinton. It no, it doesn't. To do with if it. you want to argue and you want to talk about, again, the difference between gross negligence and extremely careless, a lot of people will have that conversation. But today, you are looking at boxes of classified documents strewn across a public place, also that were transported to another location, even to the point, who, whoever the family member who texts, I won't be able to fit all the boxes on the plane. Whatever shall we do? Come okay, on, Katie. Yeah, but as the judge well. did say, these are presidential personal records, which he has the sole authority to make personal. Just as the Bill Clinton sock drawer case proved, and just as an Obama judge ratified, that is the law. It's yeah. a civil situation. It's not criminal. So this is all nothing. Well, and, and I'll tell you why it does matter. And it's not just deflection to talk about Hillary Clinton and to talk about Joe Biden and Hunter Biden. The fact that classified documents that were taken by Joe Biden when he was a senator ended up in his garage where Hunter Biden, who has a lengthy shady record of engaging with people like 
I don't know, hookers who are all over his, his laptop, Chinese shady foreign spies. figures, Chinese spies. There's no question about, you know, whether he was possibly allowing them into the house when Joe Biden wasn't around, just sitting in the garage, not to mention he was making these foreign deals with shady figures who did not have the interest of the United States in mind. They have an interest of how they can bribe and make sure that their interests, whether it's for the Chinese Communist Party or for Ukraine, to be uh, changed in their favor. The fact is that Hillary Clinton had a digital <laughs> box of an unclassified or, or an unsecure server with classified information on it as a Secretary of State after she left that office in her bathroom. So if you want to talk about how this is all bad, sure, you should not mishandle classified information. But the double standard of justice in this country is becoming a serious problem, not for Donald Trump, alone, but for everyday Americans who are looking at their federal government and going, it's being weaponized against people who disagree with the left. And we've seen that over and over and over again. And the Department of Justice puts out this indictment. It looks bad. They always do at the beginning. And then the narrative completely falls apart once there's a response days, weeks, months later from Trump and from the actual evidence that we see. We'll see what happens on Tuesday. We'll see what happens with the trial. Um, but when it comes to the credibility of DOJ, because they've gone through this list of witch hunts, as the president says, for years, eight years of this, over and over again with different situations, they have no credibility left. So even if these things are true in the indictment, nobody's going to believe it. And that's a problem for American democracy, as the left would it say. It was a grand jury verdict, though. This is the same thing. You're acting but as if no it was just, the and the jury problem. wasn't it's full a, of Andy McCabe, Peter Strzok, and George Soros. It's just an they indictment. They were a jury of his peers. It's just an indictment. It doesn't mean it anything. Doesn't it hasn't even gone to trial. Wait a minute. You, the grand jury's a jury of his peers? The people who were selected yeah, for well, it? Yeah, well, you have a jury of your peers when they get to hear both sides. Let's go, go Greg. Greg. Mm. Mr. Gutfeld. Yes, thank you. That You're is welcome. my name. I don't, it, this isn't, I think most people understand this isn't about breaking laws. It's about breaking Trump. Uh, even the charges are theatric. I mean, dozens of mini indictments, you know, basically like they just chopped up a candy bar into little bite sized snacks. It's meant to exhaust and overwhelm not just Trump, but his supporters, right? It's meant to psychologically flood the zone up to the election to keep Trump's persuasive abilities at bay, to keep Trump's supporters occupied, to scare away donors, right? Yep. Nobody's going to want to give money if they think that he's going to go to jail. Uh, we know that this whole classified document stuff is a murky place. It's like everybody knows that. So this is like the choice to do this is definitely and only definitely a political one. The problem, though, is with this exhaustion strategy, you think it wears people down. But when you look at Trump supporters and Trump, it winds them up. Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't think the Democrats or the media ever, ever understood that concept or the bigger concept, which is always their uh, problem, the concept of going too far. You know, they don't un they don't understand limits. Right. So you have no limits in criminal justice reform. Where is that going? You have no limits on the woke gender nonsense. Right. So when you come out against uh, the surgical mutilation of children, they accuse you of being transphobic because they don't understand the limit. They don't understand if you say you want a border, you're tr you're all xenophobic because they don't understand the limit. The persecution of Trump and not the prosecution is based on the fact that they have no limit. They don't understand. They, because they classified him as worse than Hitler, you can do anything. So you have leaks, piled up charges, an overwhelming antipathy toward Trump that is creating this relentless witch hunt. And you think that trotting out this stuff is going to alienate him? No. It just feeds their energy. When, you are taking, when you're taking their candidate off the stage... Do you think they're just going to walk away from that? You're taking their choice of president. 75 million people know what you're doing. It's not about Trump. It's about his voters. When you investigate Joe Biden, nobody cares about his voters. Nobody does. We know why they voted for Joe. They, they didn't like Trump. But you go after Trump, something different happens. You go after the people that support him. You are, and when you arrest your rival, you think that oh. people think the election in 2020 was corrupt? You think they're going to buy the results of this? They are worsening a divide. 
right? They're pouring salt on a wound because they don't care about the people. They only care about the politics. And that's all I got to say. Well said, everybody. <laughs> hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.